So here we are again, with the one and only Vega 64. And so this is a follow-up video to the previous one, where we tested smart access memory, or Resize spar with this one. And the results were kind of uh, disappointing. And uh, well, new driver came out and things did improve. So the original driver that we used for this one to make the smart access memory or resizable bar work properly, or in theory it should have, was 20.11.1 and a new optional driver has come out, the 21.2.3 and it is working absolutely great for this one, at least in the most of the titles and stuff that I tested it with, and the tests this time. I have done some changes. Now I included Hitman 3 in sliders and not only in talk like I did last time. And uh, I also added two productivity benchmarks for GPU rendering. Because some can be pretty DRAM heavy when there's a lot of stuff going on or high resolution. So I went easy on it first. I did Blender BMW test. And then a software I found. It is Tapas Video Enhance AI. And I upscaled and random royalty free video that I found online from 1080p to 8k with this one and 8k should be pretty VRAM heavy so the test system has got an upgrade from 16 gigs to 32 gigabytes DDR4 3200 megahertz to see if the extra RAM would make a difference at all and nah it really didn't. And I have my Ryzen 5 3600 clocked at 4.2 gigahertz. My MSI B450 Tomahawk Max 2 with the latest BIOS. And of course, the Vega 64. All the games ran from my SanDisk 1TB SSD. And the cooler for the CPU is an Cooler Master ML120LV2 RGB, which they sent me some time ago to do a review on. And it is an absolute amazing cooler, by the way. And everything is powered by the Corsair HX1200i. I mean, Kind of a powered power supply, but whatever. I don't have to upgrade for a long time. So without further ado, let's roll the benchmarks.
well. I should have mentioned this earlier, but I did add 4K in this. And uh, I didn't test it originally, so they are just results for themselves. So the harder bore 4K benchmarks that I ran this time, it was Hitman 3 and the Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, this one can do it. You can get uh, around 30 to 40 FPS in 4K in Cyberpunk. It is not that bad, actually. And in Hitman, you can get a comfortable 60 FPS or more with this guy. So with the previous driver, Time Spy was absolutely terrible, garbage. And uh, this time, over a five thousand point improvement. Just because of a driver. And I'm not using a beta BIOS anymore. So Blender did not make a whole difference, which I didn't expect it to be. But in Topaz, Video Enhanced AI, the drivers did play a lot. I mean, when you're doing that upscaling, it's counting seconds per frame and not frames per second, as it usually is. So for one frame, it takes around 1.6 to 1.7 seconds. And this is only a six second clip. And uh, with stock with the older driver, but smart access memory or resize bar disabled. It did it in 45 minutes, as well as the new driver with resizable bar or smart access memory enabled. But with smart access memory enabled on the older driver, it was a pain. That one was 9.5 seconds per frame, which took 25 minutes to uh, render that six second clip. And uh, yeah, Ugh. terrible. So in reference to this, my I've tested this on my personal rig, which has an RTX 2080 Super in it. And that one does 2.7 seconds per frame. So this one is faster by almost one second per frame. And uh, when I tested it on my main rig, it uh, I did from 1080p to just 4K for some playing around with that software. And I mean, this, they take it to 8K in a faster time. So for Video Enhanced AI, Vega 64, is thumbs up. And now it is the games. The main point here is to reference old driver versus new driver with resize bar on or smart access memory enabled. So the game that you got the highest improvement of them all was Hitman 3 with the old driver at 1080p. Absolute rock bottom settings. It was around 30 FPS, 33 I believe it was, to be precise. And this time, an improvement by 93 FPS, only by the driver. So with that later driver, now it is actually worth it. Because most of the games, it doesn't 
matter a whole lot. It doesn't benefit or gain in all of them. But some titles do stick out. And they do stick out well. So if you have a compatible motherboard and a Ryzen 3rd gen or up, do try this if you have this one. It is worth it. So the main point now is the Vega 64 still holds up and it does a damn good job. So if you have this and a Ryzen 3rd gen CPU or or newer, enable it. If you have a BIOS that is compatible. And so that's it for this time. I hope you have enjoyed it. And don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future content. I have something new coming up very soon. Stay tuned for that. And I see you all in the next one.